Hello everybody, this is Alan Underwood with CodingBlocks.net and today in this video I'm going to show you what JavaScript closures are and why you even care and why you would need them. So in order to demonstrate where we were and how to get to a closure, I'm going to do a simple little class just to give an example. So we're going to start with the person class. It's got just a few variables, so it'll be easy to walk through the demonstration. So function person, and it's going to provide a first name and a last name. All right. And in here, there's a couple things we're going to do. Uh, let, let's go with decent OO approach to this, and let's go ahead and create some getters and setters. Uh, typically, what you would see in a constructor somewhere is you might see something like this dot first name equal first name and this dot last name equal last name. All right, and let's go ahead and create the getters and setters. We're gonna revisit this in a minute, but we'll just walk through this in the way that you've probably seen it before. And if not, hopefully this will this will help you out a little bit anyways. So now we're gonna create the getters and setters for this. So let's say this dot set first name function, and we'll give it a vowel. And we're gonna say this dot first name equal val this dot get first name equal function and we're just going to return that back out so return this dot first name all right and just for time's sake here let's copy and paste this and do the same for last name and this is how you introduce bugs into your code but this is fairly simple, so uh, you'll have to spare me on this one. So this last name, and we'll do it here. Last and last. All right. And we're going to do one more function as well. We're going to call this this dot get full name. Uh, oops. Equal function val. Oops. We don't want val. And we're going to say return this dot get first name. Plus, and we're going to put a little space in between it and say this dot get last name. All right. Okay. So this is pretty vanilla type stuff here. So if we say we want to create a person here, let's say var John equal new person, and we're going to call him John Doe. All right. What we'd expect to see here now is when we instantiate this, and, and we're going to go ahead and console log him so we can see what is on this guy. What we expect to see here is an object that has a first name, a last name, set first name, get first name, set last name, get last name, and get full name. So let's go ahead and, and update the fiddle, and let's see if that's what we get. Hopefully we don't have any errors, and we do. And so there we go. So check it out. First name, get first name, get full name, get last name. Those are all there. So you can see that this is this is working, this is what we expect, right? So there's a couple of problems and this is where it starts to come into play. So here's, here's the big issue with it is you can completely bypass these set first name, set last name type things. So let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's put some business logic in here, it, albeit very thin at best, but we're gonna uppercase all this stuff. So we're gonna say to uppercase. Say that you, you really want the first name and the last name to always be uppercase, right? And so this will be to upper case. All right, I haven't actually said anything. So when you do that, then in order to follow OO properly, you wouldn't want to just cram these into the variables. You'd actually want to use your getters and setters. Well, there's a problem here. Because you're doing this up here, you're defining these variables first, these sets and gets won't exist. And so I'll show you just to prove it here. But let's say, oops. Let's say this dot set first name, and then we do this, and let's say this dot set last name, and then, and now if we try and run this, actually let's update it. So you see this error right here, you see undefined is not a function. And essentially what's going on is it's saying, hey, we don't have this set first name. Well, you can't call it before you define it. So it's kind of interesting when you, this is just a tidbit for JavaScript in general. When you do function at the beginning and then you do like you name it, 
that exists. So I could actually put this up above it, and I'll show you in a second. However, when you don't use this method of defining a function, this kind of does it globally. When you don't do that, then everything else is done in the order sequentially as it's defined. So this set first name and set last name don't exist here. So in order for this to work properly, we actually need to move this down to the bottom. So let's put it right here after everything's been defined. And now if we update this and run it, we should see that everything's good. So check it out. There you go. And you can see that it did the two uppercase. And again, this is just thin business logic. It's nothing that you would probably ever really care about, but it'll demonstrate the point. So set first name, set last name. You can see that it's in there uppercase. That's beautiful. That's what we want. Um, so just to prove what I was talking about a second ago, if we do this and move this up above here and we update this thing, you can see that it still did it. So when you define a function this way, it's available pretty much anywhere on the page. However, if we had done it like this, if we had said var person equal function, first name, last name, then that would not have worked. So just just a, uh, a little tidbit on JavaScript for you. Um, another tidbit, I should say. So we've got those down there. Now, what's the problem with this? So first, you can see that you can inspect this thing. You can see first name and you can see last name. Well, here's the big problem with it. So you want everything to be uppercase, right? That's why you put these getters and setters in place. Well, here's the problem. You could basically now say John dot last name equal, uh, let's say Doe like that. And now let's do a console dot log on John. Uh, actually, the console log is probably going to fail. Let's let's do a console.log get full name. So let's do it here because Chrome has a tendency to always show you because these are shared by reference, these objects, it would show you the latest values of this. So what we really need to do here is let's get rid of this console.log, John, and let's just console.log dot log and let's say John dot get full name. All right. So this will return us back a string. So it won't be a reference. So in this case, we will see this thing change. All right. So we should see capital John Doe there. And then right here, we're going to do the same thing. So let's copy this and paste it and run it again. And here's where you're going to see things kind of start to fall apart a little. So check it out. The first one worked great, right? We instantiated it. It called its own getter and setter in here, and so it uppercased it for us, even though we didn't do it here, and it shows it down here. So that's what we want. Oh, but now somebody was able to go in and basically bypass that, that uppercase that we wanted to enforce, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it now. I mean, you could probably get fancy and put some some watchers and events, but we're talking about ridiculous amounts of stuff just to try and make sure your business rules are enforced. Well, the problem is because of the way that this is set up using the um, this variables here, these member variables are accessible and they're basically like public variables in a strongly typed language. So if you're using Java or C Sharp, these are essentially the same thing as defining something like public... Uh, first name. That's that's essentially the same thing. So that's where closures now come in. That concludes part one of our two-part video on JavaScript closures. In this video, we identified the problem and that there are no such thing as private variables, and that makes things quite difficult when using OO in JavaScript. In part two, we are going to show you how closures can actually solve this problem in JavaScript. If you found this video helpful at all, please do click the thumbs up button below and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also below, click the share button and share on Twitter, Facebook, you know, anywhere where you think that people might find this information useful. And you can head over to www.codingblocks.net where you can find our podcast where we talk about all things programming 
And, you know, you can find us also in iTunes and Stitcher by just going in there and searching for coding blocks. So without further ado, go ahead and click the link and let's head over to part two of this two part course and you'll find out exactly how closures can solve this problem for you.